Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about linear inequalities. Before we proceed, the only thing that you'll need to know going into this video is how to solve a linear equation, and you'll need to be familiar with interval notation. If you need refreshers on either of these topics, I've got videos on both. We'll start off with a motivating question. Consider the equation 5x minus 3 equals 1 plus 3x. At this point, we should be comfortable with how to solve this. When you run through the steps, you'll get a solution of x equals to 2. You might have noticed that with linear equations, you get at most one solution, which makes writing our answer pretty easy. Just write x equals 2. To help us ease into what a linear inequality is, let's talk about this equation in a graphical sense. You aren't expected to know how to graph such equations, but at the moment, just take me at my word when I say that the steep line represents 5x minus 3 represents 1 plus 3x. When we solve this linear equation, in a graphical sense, we're essentially asking where do these lines intersect? At this point, they intersect at the x value of 2, where the x values are laid out on the horizontal x-axis. Again, if you don't know how to draw this, that's totally okay. This is just a visual representation of what we're getting, or what it means for two linear equations to equal each other. It means that the lines that they graph into cross. But what if I took this a step further? Let me take the same equation and tweak it just a little bit. What if I want to know where 5x minus 3 is less than or equal to 1 plus 3x? So what I'm looking for are the values of x that make the left-hand side less than or equal to the right-hand side. I'll pull up our same drawing. Since I'm solving for x, everything is in terms of the x-axis here. So what I'm looking for is what portion of the number line, or the x-axis rather, is 5x minus 3 less than or equal to 1 plus 3x. This means I'm asking for where does the line 1 plus 3x sit above 5x minus 3 in this picture. If I shade it in, you'll notice that it's going to be the left half of the x-axis. Notice that my vertical purple line starts at where the two graphs intersect. And we know from the previous slide that these graphs intersect at the x value x equals 2. And if I proceed further, I can actually solve this linear inequality using the exact same methods I would use as if I was solving a linear equation. The inequality sign is preserved throughout, so I end up with a solution of x less than or equal to 2. And this seems to agree with my picture. It looks like the region of the x-axis that shows 5x minus 3 being less than or equal to 1 plus 3x is actually the portion of all numbers on the x-axis that are less than or equal to negative 2. I'll go ahead and shade it in here. So it's this area of the x-axis that I care about. So it means that my solution set would be all values of x less than or equal to negative 2. And this is written as the interval from negative infinity to 2 closed at 2. I'll emphasize again that you don't have to know how to draw this graph and all the details that are going on here. It's just a way to visualize what you're looking for. The method of solving a linear inequality is almost identical to the way that you would solve a linear equation. Let's go to some definitions. A linear inequality is a relation between two expressions where either expression is at most linear. And by at most linear, I mean it's a statement that's either a polynomial of degree 1 or a number. So as long as you have an inequality that involves x's that are only raised to powers of 1, you've got yourself a linear inequality. Those expressions can look like this. ax plus b less than or equal to cx plus d, or ax plus d is strictly less than cx plus d. And all of these, a, b, c, and d, are just real numbers. There are differences between these and linear equations, but the biggest difference is how you actually read off your answers. If the inequality you're looking at involves a less than or equal to sign, then you have two possibilities for what x comes out to be. The first thing you could get is that x comes out to be less than or equal to some number. If that is your case, you would draw it this way on the number line, where your arrow is pointing towards negative infinity, and you would get the interval negative infinity to the number that you found with a square bracket around that number. We're using a square bracket because this inequality is less than or equal to. The equal to is allowing that number to be part of our solution set. You can also get that the number is less than or equal to x. When this happens, your number line is drawn this way, and you would get this interval from the number to infinity where my square bracket is sitting around that number. Again, because my inequality involves a less than or equal to sign. So if ever you have a less than or equal to sign, then your solution set is going to be closed at that end. Now if I strictly have a less than sign, my answers look very similar, 
although I'm going to have open parentheses around the numbers that I find instead of closed square brackets. So if I find that x is less than some number that I find from this inequality, then my solution set looks like negative infinity to that number open at that number. And then lastly, if x is less than the number that I found, then my solution set looks like open bracket at that number to positive infinity. At the end of the day, solving linear inequalities is not much different than solving linear equations. We just have different forms for our answers. Those forms look like one of these four intervals. So even though I have been saying that solving linear equalities is just like solving a linear equation, because we do use the same kind of techniques, but we need to add one more thing. Whenever we are multiplying or dividing both sides of our inequalities by a negative number, then the inequality will be flipped. Now we're ready to look at some examples. Solve the inequality 2x minus 5 is greater than 3. First, I'll add 5 to both sides to give me the revised equation 2x greater than 8. Then I divide both sides by 2 to get a solution set of x greater than 4. I need to write this in interval notation though, so I can draw the number line to help me out, and this will give me the interval from 4 to infinity that's open at 4, because this interval holds all values of x that are strictly greater than 4. For our next example, solve x is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1. First thing I'll do is subtract 2x from both sides to give me negative x is greater than or equal to 1. If this were a linear equation, I would multiply both sides by negative 1, which I can still do, but when I do that, remember that I have to flip my inequality. Once I flip it, I get a solution set of x is less than or equal to negative 1. Now when I draw this on my number line, it looks something like this, and then I get the interval from negative infinity to negative 1 closed at 1 because my inequality is a less than or equal to. So both of these expressions use the same techniques as with a linear equation. I just have this extra step of flipping my inequality should I multiply or divide by a negative number. Again, you only have to do this with multiplication or division, so if I add or subtract negative numbers, then I don't have to flip. For our last example, look at the inequality 1 minus x over 2 is greater than 3x plus 2. The first thing I'll do is subtract both sides by 1 to give me the revised equation minus x over 2 greater than 3x plus 1. And then I'll multiply both sides by negative 2, which will in turn flip my inequality to give me x is less than negative 2 times 3x plus 1, which simplifies to negative 6x minus 2. Then I will add 6x to both sides to get 7x is less than negative 2, and then once I divide both sides by positive 7, I get x is less than negative 2 over 7. Here's how that's going to look on the number line, which will help me write out my interval, which is negative infinity to negative 2 over 7, open at 7. To finish up, let's talk about another kind of linear inequality. This one will have a different kind of solution set than we've been seeing so far. So what if we wanted to solve something that looked like 2 less than or equal to x plus 1 less than or equal to 4? Even though it looks like there's a lot more going on here, it's really not too bad. We're going to be using the same kind of process, just with a little bit more bookkeeping and being a little bit more careful with how our solution set looks. We have two inequality signs going on here, so anytime I add, subtract, multiply, or divide, I have to make sure that I'm doing it by all three components of this inequality. To isolate x, I'll go ahead and subtract 1 from all parts of this inequality. Doing so gives me the revised inequality 1 less than or equal to x less than 4. And I'll immediately put this on the number line. My endpoints 1 and 4 will go on the number line, and then I make the observation that this inequality is telling me that x sits between 1 and 4. So I can draw on the number line like this, with a filled in circle over 1 and open circle around 4, which gives me the interval that is closed at 1 and open at 4 is my final answer. So if ever you see an inequality like this, just make sure that you're taking care of each operation on every part of the inequality and be careful about writing your solution set. That's why number lines are very good because they help you visualize what you're writing.